This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about exactly what the Bitcoin blockchain is, what Bitcoin miners are, what nodes and full nodes are, and I want to do it in the simplest way possible for people who really don't know that much about Bitcoin. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So the best way to describe Bitcoin, people have described it using a very fancy term called a decentralized ledger, which is what the blockchain is. But I'm going to put it in very simple terms. So if you have a bank account, let's say you have a checking account with Wells Fargo, they are very careful to monitor how much money goes into the account versus how much goes out of the account. And the reason for this is that you should not be able to spend money that you don't have. You should not be able to double spend, spend the same dollar twice. And this is the same thing uh, that the Bitcoin blockchain tries to accomplish. Uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, as it sounds like, it's just a chain of blocks. It's a chain of blocks that are all strung together. And each block contains a whole bunch of transactions. I'm going to show you a picture of it in a minute. But basically, one block contains the record of all the transactions that have taken place for that block. These are people who are buying and selling Bitcoin, sending it to another address. Now, the reason this is all kept track of, as we said, just like a traditional bank ledger, is you want to make sure, or the system wants to make sure, that the same Bitcoin doesn't get spent twice by the same person. You can't really have a currency, especially a digital currency, where someone can keep spending the same Bitcoin again and again. That wouldn't work very well, and it wouldn't be a secure system, and it wouldn't be a good place to store value or store, store wealth. So each of these new blocks is created about every 10 minutes, approximately. Sometimes it's a little faster, sometimes it's slower. And then that new block is glued on, quote unquote glued on, to the chain of blocks, to extend the blockchain. So here we have a whole chain of blocks. This is uh, what the blockchain is. We, here we have a new block that's made every 10 minutes. And when this block is finished, it's going to be glued on to the blockchain. And this blockchain goes all the way back to 2009 from when Bitcoin was created. It's a record of, of, of all the transactions that have taken place. And one of these blocks has really been produced every minute since 2009. We can go go to what's called a block, a block chain explorer or block explorer. And we can see here, I'll link to this in the description notes below, you have something called height, which is really just, uh, I guess if we think of it, this is the height, all these blocks stock, stacked on top of each other. And we're currently, as I'm recording this, we're on block 641,172. That's how many blocks have been created and added to the blockchain since 2009. And uh, this is, uh, you may have heard of the Bitcoin halving. That takes place after every 2,000, 200,000 blocks. So we've had three Bitcoin halvings, the most recent one in May of 2020. But that just shows you that we're about 41 a thousand blocks past that halving. We don't have to worry about that for now. I'm going to make another video about the halvings, or you can check out my previous video. But the point here is that you have all these different blocks, and they're numbered, and they're made approximately every 10 minutes. Now, if we just click on this top block, block number 641,172, I'm just going to open it in a new tab. We can see uh, we can see the uh, the number of transactions in it. Uh, there are about 3,231 transactions. You can see a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to go into right here. But if we scroll all the way down, we can see the individual transactions that are included in this block. So here, for example, someone sent a 31.0569 Bitcoin. And this, this goes on and on for, uh, call it 10 pages. So this would be a single block a single block like this new block right here that's uh, being added to the blockchain as we speak. Now, the great thing about the blockchain is as you get very far down here, these, these old blocks cannot be changed or modified because of the way the code works. So they're extremely secure. So we've talked about uh, these new box blocks being created every 10 minutes. Who exactly creates the new blocks? Well, you may have heard of Bitcoin mining or Bitcoin miners. These are, our, our people who run these very specialized computers, and they are the ones who create these new blocks. And they're called miners in the sense that whenever they create a new block, if they win the race, basically if they have to solve a complex math problem, a cryptographic puzzle using the computer, and if they win that race, they get to create the new block and they get paid 
uh, a, a reward in Bitcoin for being the first to do that. Right now, that reward is 6.25 Bitcoin, so approximately uh, $62,000 for one block. Again, these Bitcoin miners, they're not digging in the ground or anything. They're very specialized computers. And I uh, used to be able to do this on your computer now, but there's been kind of an arms race in computer power. So you need very specialized machines to do now. As we said, whoever solves the puzzle first, whichever miner, so there are all these miners all around the world competing, whoever uh, solves that puzzle first, crunches the numbers, gets to create the new block and glue it on to the blockchain. Here's, a, uh, here's an example actually from Etsy of a sort of uh, boutique uh, uh, Bitcoin miner, you, you can you can use these to mine different different cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin's the only one I, I like and I'm interested in. This just gives you an idea of what they look like. Normally, you'll see these giant Bitcoin mining uh, rigs or farms where you see many many computers strung together, and these things are expensive. People uh, have a lot of faith in the future of Bitcoin, especially Bitcoin miners, and they're willing to actually spend billions of dollars on mining equipment. And the, the key for Bitcoin miners is they just want to earn enough, they want to earn more from mining new Bitcoin than it costs them to set up these buildings with these specialized computers in them, to pay for all the utilities, to pay for the electricity, to pay for the cooling, etc. So those are Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin miners, they create new blocks. Again, each block is created every 10 minutes roughly, and each block contains thousands of Bitcoin transactions. Here's a really nice visual that I'll link to. Each of these uh, little buses on the right can be seen as a block. You can see here, this is block 641,176. And each of these, um, these little people, you can click on them. Each one is a pending transaction that's about to go into the blockchain. We can see that this one is sending about 0.1988 Bitcoin. Once they're all loaded up, the bus leaves and you can um, you can click and get various information on the different blocks as well as what the median fee that's being charged by the network uh, right now. How many pending transactions? It looks like there are 56,000 pending transactions. So this is another way of really visualizing these individual blocks. Then they leave and you can see the little sign here says that they're going uh, to be added to the blockchain. Very mesmerizing to watch, especially if you have kids who want to show them. So we've talked about the blockchain, just a string of blocks. We've talked about the miners who create the new blocks. Now we're going to talk about the nodes. A node, especially a full node, is just a computer that's running the Bitcoin software and that contains a complete copy of that entire blockchain. That's why it's called a full node because it has the whole blockchain on there. Now you can run a partial mode, but it's most helpful to the network if you run a full node. This does require a, f a fast internet connection and a good data plan because it's gonna, it can be expensive. Uh, and uh, the blockchain itself now is about 329, 330 gigabytes getting bigger every day. And so if you run a full node, you, and you could basically do this on your laptop or desktop, if you, especially if, if you have a free one that you're not gonna be using for anything else, you basically just go to the Bitcoin um, uh, website and I will uh, I'll link to this. This explains how to run a full node all the different, uh, whether you're running Windows or Linux or or Mac operating system. And you can just go here, you download Bit Bitcoin Core, and uh, it will basically start communicating with other computers on the network, on the Bitcoin network, other nodes. Now, the nice thing about uh, the software is that it constantly is checking out the blockchain and new transactions and making sure that there's no fraud, that there's no double spend, Etc. And so the more nodes in the network, the more secure the network is, and uh, the more the more real power is in the network. I'm going to show you a map right now. These are all the nodes around the world. When people talk about government shutting down uh, Bitcoin, especially the United States shutting down Bitcoin, which it's certainly not going to do. It looks now like they're going to regulate it. But you can see there are all these nodes in in North America, in Europe. In, uh, in Russia as well, in China, in other parts of Asia, in India, uh, in Australia, in South America, etc., in Africa. Um, and so even if the U.S. government decided to shut down, uh, to somehow go into people's houses and turn off all these nodes, again, this is a very decentralized network, it's spread all around the world, just because the U.S. decided to uh, maybe treat Bitcoin like marijuana and break into your house and uh, make sure you don't have either of them, 
they, they wouldn't be able to do this to machines in China or Russia. They're not really gonna put up with it, etc. So this is the real power of the Bitcoin network. It's completely decentralized. It's not controlled by anyone. It's basically all of these nodes talking to each other, uh, connected up to the miners as well, who are constantly mining new blocks, packaging up transactions and adding them, creating new blocks, packaging up transactions into a new block, adding them to the blockchain every single uh, 10 minutes, roughly. Now, uh, just to review, basically Bitcoin miners, they add new blocks, they get paid uh, with new Bitcoin, sort of a miner subsidy, they call it, or a miner's reward. They also get paid transaction fees. And once all of the uh, Bitcoin has been mined, once there are only once there are 21 million Bitcoin in circulation, uh, or in existence, there will no longer be a reward for new Bitcoin. There will just be transaction fees that will pay the miner. Now, uh, so that's Bitcoin miners. As we said, Bitcoin nodes, they run the Bitcoin software. They make sure that nothing is fishy. They verify all the transactions and they make sure that the same address or the same person is not spending the same Bitcoin twice. All these Bitcoin nodes talk to each other. They all download the blockchain and they all continually update the blockchain, and then they compare it amongst themselves to make sure that this decentralized ledger, just like you would have a ledger for your bank account, a list of all the money coming in and all the money coming out. In the case of Bitcoin, this is shared all around the world on the Bitcoin network by all these different nodes. And so this is what it means when we say that a blockchain is just a decentralized ledger. A ledger is just a list of transactions as we have in every block of the blockchain. And we say it's decentralized because it really is this peer-to-peer -peer network. There are all these nodes around the world running the Bitcoin software and talking to each other. And this is one reason that it's very difficult to uh, come up with your own cryptocurrency or reinvent Bitcoin, maybe do a hard fork, as people have tried to do with some of the uh, Bitcoin forks, is that you can do whatever you want. The Bitcoin software is open source. You can change it. But how do you convince all these people around the world to run your software? This is the real power of network effects, uh, the power of having so many people invested in the Bitcoin network, both by running full nodes, as well as all these miners who have spent millions or even billions of dollars investing in Bitcoin mining equipment. Again, Bitcoin is the largest cryptocurrency by market cap. It is the, uh, the most liquid. It's the one most interested. Uh, that it's the one that institutional investors are most interested in. So I'm not interested in any other uh, cryptocurrencies, at least at this point. Uh, I'm 100% 100 uh, 100 interested in Bitcoin. Let me know your questions and comments. Hopefully you found, these, found this helpful. And uh, please hit that subscribe and like button if you did. Let me know your questions and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.